Good morning, I'm Craig Getty. I'm here with the team from St George Hospital in Cogra, uh, Paddy Bastic, um, Ed Carol Harris and Antoinette Fontanella. Hi. How are you? <laughs> Good. How thanks. are you all? Great, great. So look, thanks for your time this morning. Um, we just wanted to start to talk about clinical trials and in particular cooperative group clinical trials in Australia and in particular ANZ UP clinical trials. Um, and so, so where is St George? Where is St George Hospital? It's located in Sydney and it's very close to the airport, so it's on, along Botany Bay, beautiful area. So people parachute in? Um, yeah, <laughs> kite surfing, more like it, yeah. paddleboarding, yeah. Okay, and um, Antoinette, what do you do in the in the department? Um, I'm a clinical trial coordinator. I've been there for about 16 years um, and specialising mainly in lung cancer, but now renal cell cancer, right, okay. so I'm very happy to be at ANZOP. Yep. So, um, Carol, Patty, what motivates you to do clinical trials? Why, why don't you just do routine clinical practice? Clinical trials gives a chance to get the latest uh, treatments to patients, either new drugs that are coming available or repurposing old drugs in a new way, um, and it gives patients more opportunities for more treatments. And um, Patty, what do you look for in a clinical trial when you're, when you're selecting them for your patients? Um, the trials that would be most interesting would be uh, those with drugs that we've seen proof of concept at, at conferences or have been very interesting in other tumour types that may be useful in what we're treating now, um, or new combinations that might allow patients access to drugs that we couldn't get funded otherwise, um, or a combination that's not usually used in that. But obviously we need to find trials where we know we can recruit to it, so we have the patient population who would be eligible for that trial. So there's a lot of choice out there, a lot of trials and a lot of patients to, that need new opportunities. How do you manage that? those those uh, tensions within your team and who gets what trial and how do you how do you work that out and how do you make how do you make sure that the trials are available to patients? Yeah, I guess the first thing we look at is uh, do we think it's um, a trial that has our patient population and we can put patients on it and then next would be is it something that we may already have a trial available in so we don't want it to be a competing trial where we're already those patients might be on something or be eligible for a trial already and that would then impact on the recruitment to each trial. Um, and we share the protocols around between our team. So anytime we're approached for a trial, we would send it to the other clinicians that treat that tumour type and discuss it with the trials unit to see if there's capacity to take it on and interest to take on that trial. Thank you. And, and Carol, what do patients ask you about clinical trials? Do they, do they, get, that it's, they get that it's an experiment, but what, what, what are the questions they ask you? Um, they, I mean, if it's a placebo control, they want to know whether they're going to get the drug or not, obviously. Yeah. Um, they they want to know that that they're not going to be disadvantaged um, and they want to know that actually probably they are going to be advantaged so that uh, the minimum treatment they'll get is standard of care but they'll also potentially get something that adds value and I think one of the major advantages as well is they get the whole um, support uh, so there's very structured of, of bloods and scans and support from the trial nurses um, so an extra level of support to, so that they get the best treatment possible. And so clinical trials take a lot of work. So Antoinette, how, um, how do you overcome the barriers to uh, clinical trials? How do, you, how do you make sure that the clinical trials that you get actually function well in your department? Um, I think it's really important to have um, the investigators on our side and just really available and helping out when we've got questions. Um, it's also we've got like a lot of, like the trials are very time sort of intensive. So making sure that we don't have a lot of competing trials and um, have enough time to dedicate to these trials and our patients. So, um, yeah, awesome. is there anything? Awesome. And so um, one of the clinical trials that ANZAP's got with St George at the moment, in fact, St George is the uh, top of the leaderboard for, for this trial. <laughs> keypad. It's the keypad study. So, um, Carol, can you tell us about the keypad study? Sure. Uh, the keypad study is a second-line treatment in metastatic clear cell ren renal cancer that looks at pembrolizumab plus denosumab. Uh, we know that immunotherapy works in kidney cancer and pembrolizumab is uh, an immunotherapy agent. And the, the question is, the addition of denosumab potentially can um, potentiate the immunotherapy effect of, of immunotherapy. So it's um, giving people an additional treatment, so not just immunotherapy available through the PBS, but additional potential benefit of immunotherapy plus denosumab. So there's a lot of study, there's a lot of sites around the country who are supporting with us with this trial um, and we're really grateful. You guys have had a, a little bit more success than others. Antoinette, is there anything you're doing that's really making the trial successful in your centre? Um, 
really good communication, I think. Um, so pre-screening patients before clinic, we sort of meet in the corridors and have a chat about what patients might be eligible, um, attending the MDTs and trying to pick up patients that might otherwise be missed. Um, yeah. Mm. Not and sure. Patty, yeah, um, you're, uh, you're not the investigator of the study. Carol's the investigator. So why are you, you know, you're supporting the study, you've put your own patients, you've offered this, you've put your patients on the study, you've offered the study to these patients. Um, how's that experience of being the supporter? Um, probably easier for me, actually. Obviously, when you're the principal investigator on a trial, you have to do all the paperwork and the legwork, whereas being the sub-investigator, I get to support Carol in trials that she's chosen, but she gets to do all the hard work. Um, but it's not been a difficult trial to recruit to. We, as Carol said, we know that immunotherapy works in kidney cancer, so these patients are being offered a treatment that we already know is successful and they're getting an additional treatment that might make the treatment better. So I think good communication with Carol and I to keep up to date with what each other has available um, and flagging people in advance. So a lot of talking to patients going, if your next scan shows that something is worse, then I would think about this trial. So it's not thrown on them at the last minute. And I'll just say we've made a major effort to go through our clinic lists to see who's potentially coming up and who's available. And we've brought our clinical trial coordinator to our, our urological MDT to pre-screen for patients as well for this and other trials. And finally, a question for, for all of you. What, what do you think the experience that patients have on clinical trials? Do you think it's, it's is it generally a positive experience for clinical, not just the KeepAid study, but, but for clinical trials in general? What, what do you, what, what's your perception of how patients uh, find being on a clinical trial? Um, I think patients actually enjoy the experience. They certainly get um, better coordination of care. They like having someone like Antoinette to be able to call without having to hassle the doctors. I think they feel that they get better care, better supported, it's coordinated for them. Um, and they know that they're access, a lot of the time, access to something new that maybe actually be better than the standard of care. Hey, thanks guys. Um, we're really, really grateful it ends up for all of the sites who are taking part in all of our studies and in particular St George who's been such a great supporter for our studies. So thank you so much and thanks for your time this morning. Thanks Greg.